Hey guys, and welcome to that fellow show. Dan here. Mick here. And Chris. Ah! Chris. Ah. I've um, never been honked. I've been. There you go. Yes, you have. I've been the honker. You, I've never been the honky. You've been honked you loads. You, you, oh, you, yeah. You, ah. you have been honked on this show, I can promise you. Ah. Uh, we've been asking uh, Chris to come on the show for a long time now. Actually, since the first little tube, uh, little clip I saw of you on Facebook, I just said to Mick, we have to get this guy on the show. Luckily <laughs> enough, I had no idea that we live in Wales, which is yeah. not far away. And, uh, well, you know, yeah. relatively. Relatively speaking. Um, he could have lived in LA. The Kingdom <laughs> of Wales. The Kingdom of Wales. So thank you so much for taking the time out to come and Absolutely. hang with us. Thank you for having me. It's uh, genuinely an honour. I don't know whether you remember, but I bought your first ever T-shirt. Dead. First, Did you? First ever that Chris pedal soft T-shirt. Ever um, belongs customer. to me. No! Yeah. Yeah. True. That's mad. True story. Yeah. But, um, it's funny, it doesn't seem to fit anymore. I don't know whether <laughs> <laughs> it's shrunk or I've grown, but um, yeah. Maybe, maybe a combination of the two. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, wow. Let's so uh, for any of you who don't know who Chris is, please check him out on all the r usual YouTube. Um, MySpace, Bebo. MySpace? LinkedIn, wherever, <laughs> wherever the kids use these days. Uh, <laughs> Instagram. Um, Chris, you're quite active on social media, which is how we hmm. uh, discovered you playing really lovely, tasty stuff. And then <laughs> from there, we can go out to Chris's band Buck and Evans who are around and about touring and doing stuff like that yeah yeah and have a new album coming out soonish yeah we do yeah we've got album tour dates next month um, plug plug next month being uh, August. August sorry yes, okay. August, yes. Um, not sure when this will go out so we'll try and time that right but we'll, we'll do some more plugs at the end but anyway if again we had Danish Pete on just in the last show and we said then if you've been living under a rock and you don't know who Chris is uh, please come out from the rock and discover him <laughs> hopefully via what you're about to hear now. Chris, I, I, I've I got a bunch of questions to ask you, and I think Dan might have one or two. <laughs> if I if I can muster the courage to talk during this, I will ask <laughs> some questions. So I, I, I definitely have sort of pangs of jealousy when I hear you play the guitar, oh, God. is the truth, because you've got that touch that... I don't really want to say the John Mayer thing, but let's say yeah, yeah, yeah. you have... <laughs> You've got that. You've got the the clean, the kind of very expressive, the beautiful thing. Let's do a bit so of biography the, hmm. and say, where did it start? What got you into it? Why have you become the guitar player that you are becoming? Um, I guess, as with anyone, it's a kind of journey, really. I think the first guitar player that I really latched onto as a kid was Slash. Right. I was the biggest Guns N' Roses fan in the world. I've really? Got, got a cupboard still full of every kind of GNR bootleg available to man that I kind of downloaded years ago and then religiously burnt the disc and never listened to them ever. But yeah, absolutely massive GNR fan. So Slash was the first kind of play that really, you know, kind of turned me on as a kid, I guess. And then inevitably from there, you kind of work your way backwards. So sacrilegiously kind of didn't really get Jimmy to start off with, Hendrix. Um, kind of found him a little bit messy, I guess, looking back. It kind of really didn't click with me. And then- yeah, You're not alone in that. No, it, and it kind of, it, like I said, it's sacrilegious to say, but Jimmy clicked kind of, you know, not all that long ago, really. And then it was a kind of big click when it did happen. So Hendrix is a big one for me. Um, as you said, John Mayer, I guess, more recently. Derek Trax, those guys, you know, kind of Joey, Ariel. Because I, I hear slide phrasing in your playing. Yeah, mm. me too. That we should be honking some of these guys. So yeah, just, yeah, yeah. We'll, take, we'll do honorary honks for uh, <laughs> Joey. That's just a real honk. There it is. Who else did you mention? <laughs> Ariel. Uh, Slash, uh, I know Slash. So uh, yeah, you, you know, know gonna, Slash. I don't know whether that's a. You can I'll, I'll slash. pick up the name. I'll pick up the uh, name I just dropped. I've met John um, Mayer a few times. Oh, John Mayer. Honks are plenty. Um, you know about the name drop horn? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So okay, so because there is this really lovely bluesy side to your playing, but there's also a lot of rock too. Yeah, obviously explains I, all of I that. I guess that kind of comes from the Slash thing. You know, still the biggest Slash fan in the world. Um. To the point growing up it was you know kind of that sort of um idol kind of worship where you just kind of try and emulate every kind of unique bit of his playing or his image or whatever you know which is why i've ended up with this bird's nest on my head was back combing my hair for years trying to look like slash um for a you know greasy little 14 year old kid from south wales with dead straight hair that wanted to look like mark bowl and a slash um so yeah just that kind of inevitable kind of thing you go through when you're a kid where you work your way backwards and then you kind of work your way back forwards again yeah kind of discovering it's that amazing age isn't there when you kind of 14, 15, where everything is new. Mm. You know, and did, kind of, did you do the Les Paul thing? Or did oh, you, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Les Paul and Marshall for years, um, and anything else in between that was witchcraft, you know, maybe a wild pedal. But um, 
yeah, the the pedal thing and oh how I've fallen um, <laughs> came spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it came about because of the Strat, really. The first kind of decent, proper original band um, I got in. I'd been playing Les Paul and Marshall, and like I said, that was it for years, and loved that. And inevitably, you just start to sound like the guy you're trying to emulate. And as much, mm-hmm. I guess, inevitably, I'm only ever going to sound like me because that's who I am, you know. And as much as I tried as I might to sound like Slash, it was only ever going to sound like Paul Man's imitation. So yeah. as soon as I joined an Originals band then, it was a kind of conscious thought process of, right, let's try and develop a little bit more of my own sound, you know? And for me, that was kind of digging out a strat that I built with my old man years ago. It was just a couple of parts we bolted together from eBay. Yeah. Um, and I remember when we actually put that together, I was in you know full throngs of my Les Paul into a Marshall kind of phase, picked up the strat and nis- immediately did what I did with every Les Paul, which is flick it on the neck pickup, flick it down the neck pickup, Played the call of rock, and I was like, that sounds thin and horrible, back in the cupboard. So the strat was kind of, you know, this sort of. Um, Hang on, do you mean the bridge pickup? Bridge pickup, yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah bridge sorry. pickup, yeah. I'm trying to follow that, going, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, bridge yeah, pickup, yeah. just that kind of, you know, that kind of slash sound, I guess, with yeah. the Les Paul. Yeah. That was what I wanted. Um, strat didn't sound like that, so back in the cupboard it went. And then, like I said, the first proper originals band I joined, I dug the strat out and kind of made a conscious effort to sort of uh, to do it. try and kind of dial the game back a little bit. And I had. Um, had a Boss Overdrive pedal, uh, BD2, knocking around. So it was kind of like, right, let's stick that in front of the thing, have mm-hmm. the Marshall as the clean sound, have the, the kind of BD2 as the overdrive sound, and work from there. And then, you know, that happens. So, um, <laughs> And here we are. Yeah, yeah. There's two interesting things there. One is you were brave enough to go, do you know what, I think I need my own voice. Yeah, yeah. Because so, I think for a lot of um, aspiring and amateur guitar players, you know, enthusiasts like us, all you ever really do is try and sound like all you hear yeah, yeah, yeah. so to actually go do you know what I need to just break out on my own here that's that's oh. Brave. That, now that doesn't mean we're not going to give you the Les Paul and get some <laughs> slash licks yeah, 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 the yeah, show however uh, yeah no, no, that's that's fantastic no and, I mean you you only develop your own voice really by being a poor imitation of the guy you're trying to you know, emulate and that like I said that was me for the longest time and I think subconsciously it kind of I knew it was a change I had to make you know to try and develop my own sound a little bit more but the thing which really spurred it on, I guess, is just talking to Dan about it earlier. Um, my manager, our manager at Buckingham Evans, is a guy called Alan Niven, um, who for sort of five or so years managed Guns N' Roses, saw them through from the kind of first, you know, kind of crappy club date through to Wembley Stadium, you know, and kind of was with them on that whole journey. Man, what um, kind of state is he in now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, better than the rest of the guys in the band, I think. Really? Um, but um, yeah, you know, he, he got out of it. I think it's. Uh, it was that kind of period where everyone's OD in every five minutes, you know, yeah, and Slash yeah. died twice. Um, and Alan was kind of his in charge of him when all this it's was alleged. happening. So, yeah, uh, all of these things are alleged. Just yeah, in case yeah, yeah. you're watching Mr. Slash's lawyers. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it uh, probably takes its toll after a while. But Alan, <laughs> I started sticking YouTube videos up when I was about 15, I guess, maybe. Right. Of literally me doing Guns N' Roses tracks. And you're only 16 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My uh, facial hair would attest as much. I'll be, be able to grow a beard one day. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I started sticking videos of myself up on YouTube of just playing, you know, Mr. Brownstone or whatever it was, yeah. the kind of GNR stuff. And randomly, um, totally kind of serendipitously, Alan, now manager, stumbled across me, just sent me a really kind of curt one liner, kind of saying, good, keep it up, kind of thing. And obviously, you know, for the kind of mental GNR fan that I was at that point, I knew Alan's name, I knew mm. kind of his place in the story and everything that happened, and just made a really conscious effort just to kind of keep in touch with him, keep badgering him and being an absolute nuisance just to try and find out how not to make the same mistakes that everyone makes in this industry, you know? Um, and, you know, kind of the kind of subtle seed that he kept planting was be less like Slash, be more like you, right, you know? okay. Well, um, wow. So that was, you know, that was the kind of uh, real kind of nucleus of me kind of trying to step away from being in Slash's shadow, I guess. Um, and that all, like I said, you know, kind of pick up the name, I dropped that all culminated. Um, about six years ago, I guess, when I played with Slash up at the NIA in Birmingham. Oh, and man. I think up until that point, Alan had kind of very much been kind of waiting for me to sound a little bit more like me and not it be a case of me get up and try and out Slash Slash, you know, yeah, which yeah, yeah. you're only ever going to be on a loser. Um, so, yeah, it was that kind of, that just sort of process that everyone goes through where you, you sound less like the people you want to sound like and more like what's inside of you, so... Um, and it's it's a never ending thing, isn't it? You know, it's not a yeah. it's not a journey that you kind of you That's reach the, the end destination. It's a constant evolve, you know, evolution. So mm. yeah, yeah. I thought that, so. One, that's very brave to do that. Two, I thought it was really interesting what you said about the um, Les Paul and the Strat. I would imagine there's a lot of people out there who might play 
a particular kind of guitar and you think, do you know what, I think I might want that other guitar. Yeah. And you pick it up and you expect it to yes. do the same, same thing as yeah, the other yeah, guitar, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you've just got to go, no, I'm going to let this guitar do yeah. what it should, what it's designed and That's for. how you end up with lots of guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That is the... Um, that's the argument to present to the significant other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Finding my own voice. Yeah, I found my own voice, man. But we can't pay the mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a slightly nervous laugh there because yeah. we've all kind of been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, um, Dan, do you have any questions or can we move on to the pedal board? No, I want to move on to the pedal board. I mean, yes, I do have questions, but about this, they'll come after the pedal board. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a nice looking board. It's a nice looking board. There's a lot happening, isn't there? There's it's a lot happening. Um, hell of a lot happening. Um, like I said, it went from that kind of BD2, which is the first kind of decent pedal I had. And I guess. That's a great pedal. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Pedal. Honestly, this surprise is not on there because it has been on and off um, very frequently. Mm -hmm. um, but it kind of evolved from there, really. Um, you know, kind of. Uh, Oh, don't look under there, it's like a rat's nest. It is. This is going to make me uh, cringe with embarrassment sat next to that. No, no, um, no, to be fair, all, under, our, all our boards are the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you look <laughs> under the hood, they're all like yeah, yeah. proper up top. Um, Dirty down below. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so. You've got some spectacular pedals on there. Let's just go through them in order, and mm. we'll hear them in a second. Uh, original Marshall Blues Breaker. Yeah. I got in before the crazy prices. Oh, that well cost me 16 quid in total. Oh, I, nice. I, I felt, you know, I felt bad because I bought that on eBay um, before, I guess, as with most price hikes in the past couple of years, John Mayer is to, to blame for that one. Someone recommended it to me and I had a look on YouTube, on YouTube, on eBay rather, and there were a couple on there. So I bought one, it cost me 32 quid and then it turned up and the first time I stood on it, it broke. So I got in touch with the guy, and the guy was lovely about it and just incredibly apologetic and said, look, I've had a donkey's years, it's been fine, it's probably just been waiting to go. Um, so he said, look, I don't know how much it's going to cost to actually fix that. Here's half your money back. So he gave me fixed 16 quid. <laughs> and it turns oh, out it's like a washer or something that cost me 40p. So I still kind of feel bad that I got that for, yeah, kind of less than 20 quid. But yeah, it's a great Sony panel, and they go for silly money these days, don't they? So, Let's hear it. Um, yeah. <laughs> As you will find with most of my overdrive pedals, this an initial kind of, is it on? Is it off? Is it on kind of thing? I've set them all very kind was, of... Was your guitar full up then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is that because you then stack them? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. I didn't realise they were that transparent sounding. Sorry to use a pedal. Nah, pedal buzzword. Board. Buzzword. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. They're, they're, they're fantastic. Wow. It's, that um, was the, Actually, that series, they were such great designs. The governor as well. Mm, the governor's pedal. amazing. Got an old governor knocking yep. on. We sounds... have a governor. We have governor. We do. Somewhere. Anyway, okay. Cali 76, which is presumably a compressor. Yes, it is. Wow, so nearly... Apart from the output, everything's just sort of in the middle. Yeah. I've noticed that's how you like your amp EQ as well. Yeah. Chris's um, amp, Chris has brought his own amps, Blackstar Artist 30. It, I feel shameful and happy at the same time that this is the first time we've had a Blackstar amp on that pedal show. Oh, cool. Is it really? I think so, which is shameful um, because I remember playing those at Anderson's and really liking them, mm -hmm. the Artist 30. And that is a Fuchs something or other, is it? Fuchs Clean Machine. Okay. Re Rehoused by Zilla recently. Yeah. Um, in a little, the, the initial combo it was, in a, it was a 1 by 12 combo, which weighed more than my car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it kind of made sense to make it into two bits, which made more than my car. So. And there's, you've got an EV speaker in there as well, haven't you? Yeah, EV12L, is it? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we were just having a discussion about Chris them. and I are going to start the bring back EV yeah. speakers. <laughs> uh, well, okay. They weigh a ton, don't they? They, they do. They're a weighty thing. And when I got in touch with Paul at Zillow saying, my initial plan was to have a head and a 2x12. Yeah. And I was going to try and source another EV 12 out. And Paul's initial kind of thing was, oh, okay. I was going to put two in that two rock cab. Yeah, yeah. It's like. It's a weighty thing. Isn't yeah. It, so. And not only is it a weighty thing, you actually kill people in the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the. Anyway. Um, that is really lovely. Just and you so run lovely. both of those amps 
kind of dual mono, so everything's going yeah, through both Yeah, dual mono, apps. yeah, I can't understand the stereo thing yet. It's oh, we're going to fix that. Yeah, we'll we're fix gonna that fix later, that. Yeah. We're going to fix the... Uh, it's beyond my comprehension. ...on the next pedal board we build. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, beautiful. KOT, Keto. Yeah. Centura, the Zero Zone, is constantly on. That's before the Quartermaster. Oh, so that's on all the time? Yes. So um, you're using that as an always on pedal? I am. because I'm No a game. I'm a cliche. Classic. Um, <laughs> on, and I hope the camera can get in there. Let's see if it can. Uh, it, if, just in case it can't, the output and the treble are pretty much straight up. Yeah. And the gain's at zero, which is that's how you set your, your content off. Yeah. Uh, but this is the um, KTR. KTR, yeah. Um, okay. Not actually mine. That's loaned off a mate of mine who's um, probably going to be reminded of the fact that I have it knowing season. Oh, this episode. no. Oh, no. Going to want it off me. Um, but, yeah. yeah, the KTR, that, the funny thing is, I kind of, for the couple of clones or clones that I kind of owned, I never used it as an overdrive pedal because you kind of, straight yeah. away, it's kind of like, right, it's a clean yeah. boost. Yeah. Back the gain off. Um, and do that thing. And it had never even occurred to me to try it as an overdrive panel until I got the KTR to run at the same time as the Centura. Mm. It was kind of like, well, I'm using a clean book, so I don't need that. Let's turn the gain up. And it's quite a cool sounding game panel. It's kind of, you, you forget that that was Come kind on, of what it was the designed difference for. Between that and the KOT, so for everyone out there who wants to know the difference between a King of Tone and a, a KTR uh, clone, here, here it is. Anything with three initials. <laughs> Nothing much, really. <laughs> yeah, the for so long you kind of feel the need to sort of justify why I have a million overdrive pedals and uh, not not around here. No, I know, but <laughs> yeah, inevitably, yeah. whenever you stick anything up on YouTube or kind of stick a picture on Instagram, Facebook, you get the inevitable comments. You know, kind of, do you really need that many overdrive pedals? And for the longest time, I would try and justify it. And or try and find a way to justify it. And you just give up in the end. It's just I like overdrive pedals. Doing what I do, there could be a lot worse things that I could be spending my money on. Yeah, so, I'm gonna fairly have... cracks expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bit, bit moreish as well. Yeah, this, um, <laughs> Spice bit... is a thing. I sort of think like, we, should, <laughs> we, should, we should not make light of this because it's not funny. But um, <laughs> if, yeah, uh, spice is an interesting drug. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna hazard a guess here. Yeah. and say that. So, there are, I'm going to put this into, into some context. When you first get into overdrive, or pedals in general, hmm. and I think a lot of people, um, maybe if you haven't had the chance to try lots of different overdrive pedals, you, you're in this mindset where you go, my amp sounds like this, I step on the overdrive pedal, it sounds like that. And therefore... A plus B equals C, mm. and that's that's the sound I need. Why do you need any more than that? Now, the, the guess I'm going to hazard here is that when you're playing and you're out doing a gig, you're in a, you're in a space, you start to play a solo, or whatever it is you're playing, mm. you kick something on, you go, hmm. That doesn't feel right. Is, does it work like that? Yeah. So that's, then you choose something else? That's the reason. Um, it's a total kind of feel thing, and it depends on the room. I remember you saying ages ago, you had different amps for different rooms, or yeah. different kind of favourite <laughs> amps for different venues. I have different pedals. They're less weighty, and you can carry them around these <laughs> than amps. But genuinely, it's a case of, that doesn't sound quite right. Right. Let's try the let's try the Tim, or let's try the Amp 11. And it's kind of, there's no, as much as I guess out of all of them, the KOT is the more consistent kind of, yeah, that sounds great tonight. Yeah. Yeah. That so always sounds great. Yeah. There's a little bit of... Okay, maybe the clone's not really kind of killing it tonight. Let's try the Amp 11, you know. And that's why they're all set to a relatively similar point, because I don't use them. You know, the Amp 11 isn't this sound, and the clone is this sound. It's yeah. just whatever kind of works best wherever you are. You know? Yeah. So it could be your during your set, and you're doing um, simply the best, or I should be so. Yeah, lucky. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, <laughs> you might be when you when you play the. The solo, you might not be using the same pedal each night. It might be something different. Absolutely, the Tim sounds great for play that funky music. Well, let's um. hear the Tim then. <laughs> Oh. 
that kind of thing. C can we just A B the Tim and the KOT just for a second? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why you need a 20 second fret. Very nice indeed. Yeah, thank you. Very nice indeed. Man. Um, so at this point, it would be the right thing to ask you about mm. your, uh, your, your just so- The inter claw. <laughs> inter yeah, interchangeably pick and uh, fingers. Mm. Tell us about that. I don't know what's happening, to be honest. Um, it's one of those things you get. I get a lot of questions about that, and I wish I had a more sort of erudite answer. Apart from it's a you bit said, of this. And you said the word erudite, so I think that's a good yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I think it was only ever a pick growing up, especially for that kind of you know when I was doing the slash thing. Yep. Um, it's pick all the way, you know. And I think genuinely trying to kind of retrospectively think back to where it maybe came from. Probably just laziness of being maybe sat in front of the TV playing, and this falls into the abyss. The yeah, picks. but I'm lazy. I don't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> I only know four of the pentatonic notes so far, so don't worry, it's all laziness. But um, <laughs> you played about forty of them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a few more there. Um, but yeah, just probably dropping a pick and sitting there watching Waterloo Road or some nonsense I used to watch when I was in school, trying to play with my fingers and try and replicate maybe what I was doing with a pick with my fingers. And doing a bit of that, and just over time, then. Hang on, how long ago were you in school? Um, two years ago, no. Um, what am I now? Twenty-seven. So about I don't know, ten years ago in sixth form, probably. God, so I can, I can only remember being an adult watching Waterloo Road. <laughs> <laughs> um, twenty-seven. I only, break his only watched it. Only watched it because I fancied one of the teachers. Oh, in it. But, um, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> um, uh, where was I? Um, <laughs> Yeah, the Waterloo Road. Is, Road. Um, I'm trying to distract you, make it a bit less cool, and all that, all that's happening is I'm looking less cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just trying to. Yeah, that was it. When I was a kid, um, I, like first couple of bands I was really into, prior to GNR and all that kind of stuff, were whatever my mates were listening to. It was like Offspring, Newfound Glory, punk rock, basically, mm. which you know is all kind of kind of fast right hand stuff. And I had the genius idea. Don't know why can't even begin to tell you what the rationale was of I don't need a pick to play that I'm going to do all of it with this finger but not kind of any sort of finger picking stuff literally just using the nail like that and I don't know why it's saving money perhaps maybe yeah it's sort of 14 year old logic isn't it um, yeah. and consequently just destroy that nail so if that even begins to grow now it'll just snap off the moment it touches the string really? and if I if I sort of push that into the string, I can feel the nail start to give and the string kind of go into it and it's just one of those kind of uh, nails down a chalkboard sensations, which I hate. So you, so, sorry, you did that so much you've stopped your nail from... Yeah, well, I, yeah, that, the only sort of uh, explanation I can find. I so I... It's just knackered. It really is knackered. It won't sort I of... I get some hoof, some of that hoof cream for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've tried everything. My wife's been putting like nail strengthener on me and everything and it's not happening. But so to try and explain the fingers thing a little bit. I did that for a while, and that kind of made perfect sense at the time. Not so much in hindsight, but made sense. So I had a little bit of experience of doing that, but because that nail is so kind of kaput, when it came to actually doing the kind of pick and fingers thing, or using your thumb and finger, because I didn't use that finger, I would just tuck the pick in there, and... Use that, sorry. Simon's getting cross with us because we keep talking over the reverb trials, but there. Uh, sorry, Simon. I shouldn't use so much reverb. That's but you are, yes, you should. You yeah, should. Yeah, yeah. But so you don't use your index finger when no. you. Oh my second word! Finger. Second finger. It's proper and for, wrong. For the that's, more, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And for the kind of more two strings at once thing, it's uh, what's that one? Index. Not the index finger. Middle finger and your ring finger. So. All that kind of stuff. Um, so, 
yeah, the sort of serendipitous thing in that, I guess, is that is now my pick holder, you know, when I'm doing that. And it kind of, it's an easy little access point, sort of like... Flick between the two, you know? Um, so every everything about my playing is idiosyncratic to the point of lunacy, really. But, but it's those things that give you your voice, isn't it? Um, yeah, that, I guess, yeah, give yeah. You your sort of area of expression. Yeah, absolutely. It's sort of, you know... <laughs> oh, get on with it. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm amazing with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so weird. you got to try that. You know, because the first thing I ever do mm. when that goes is, is go into that sort of froggy bottom yeah, 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 yeah. thing there. This would be scintillating viewing for the <laughs> viewers at home. This week on That Hand Show. Crawl. Yeah. Now the thing is, everyone else at home is trying this now as well. <laughs> this is the thing, people ask me, and I feel a little bit actually, reticent to sort of recommend it. Because it's a bit weird, really. Actually. Again, on with it. Ah, uh, it's so... on both your houses there is <laughs> there is there is a bizarre little relationship the, what I've found is that your kind of thumb covers maybe the sort of D the, the E the A and the D yeah. and then that second finger and the third finger kind of cover the G downwards you know so it kind of it works nicely to me it's kind of makes sense ergonomic I guess but yeah I'm always kind of reticent to really recommend that to people because it's a bit weird and it's a bit idiosyncratic like I said to the point where it might not make sense to people you know I so. think but if you're Sorry. No, go. If you're doing that that hybrid stuff, they're the fingers you use anyway. Yeah, exactly what I was yeah. Just thinking. Yeah, I can't hybrid pick hybrid pick to save my life, but if I were to give it a go, I guess it would make sense because you they kind of they're free and available, you know. Uh, this sorry, this is Okay, all right, so, okay, since, since <laughs> moving I, on, sorry. Leaving, no, I think the, the that was really interesting. When you say that you, you wouldn't necessarily recommend that, I think mm. the take point, we were hoping to get a guitar lesson out of you today, actually, <laughs> and, and we're doing it as we go along. The take point from that is if you are wedded to your pick yeah, and you never use your fingers, give it a go because there's so oh. much, isn't there so much more the, or so many extra things? stuff in there. The thing is a pick is a pick is a pick I guess to a certain extent. Obviously different thicknesses will kind of yield different sounds but your finger I mean I guess the nail inherently sounds a little bit more plasticky because yeah. it's hard so if you try and do maybe try and do that with your nail then they're not a million miles apart but they're kind of in that same ballpark. But then the tip of your finger, that kind of fleshy bit there, is going to yield a much kind of... It's... Sorry, I will learn eventually. I, will I, learn. I don't think you will. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> We've been here half an hour, it's not happened yet. Um, yeah, it's that kind of, you know, it's flesh, it's tactile, it's, you know, kind of... I would also say, so the videos we've done today, we started off doing... Um... Revival Drive video, mm. you know, the new thing from... Yeah, 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 from Origin, yeah. From these guys. Um, from these guys, sorry, <laughs> to make that more clear. Um, Dan and I were both saying that, you know, it sounds like a crank damp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those inflections, I think, really struggle to come out of super cranked dying amps, but they come out when you do what you do, mm. which mm. is just different shades of light and mid-gain, and yeah. that's... I, I don't know. I mean, I love that. That's mine. But yeah, yeah. No, it's all mid gain in this. So. Yeah, but so articulate because there's a lot of top in your sound. Yeah. Because the, the, the traditional mid gain, you know, tube screamery sound rolls so much of that high end top off, end yeah. off. But you've got it there. You've got the articulation. Oh, high end is kind of one of those sort of dirty words in there, I guess. But it's nice to have it there because it gives you that articulation. It gives you that sort of just clarity in your sound, I guess, you know. And you've got some signature pickups, haven't you? I do, yeah. Um, uh, what are they? They are made by a company in South Wales called Radio Shop. Yeah. Um, oh, I did not know that. Yeah. I it, didn't know they're from South Wales. It's funny. Um, 
I don't cross the bridge if I can get away. Get away with it. <laughs> no, um, yeah. Uh, likewise, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair you one, pay yeah. to get in. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Says a lot about Wales, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, going back, I guess two, three years now, they got in touch with me. Being South Wales, it all kind of makes sense. Gave me a set of pickups. I liked them. Had a couple of suggestions for kind of what I would like to do differently. Gave them. I can't take any credit for them. I kind of gave them a load of vague kind of imagine you're describing like an Alfa Romeo or something, kind of like these vague sort of superlatives and descriptives and they're kind of they're frantically writing them down and then trying to go away and sort of design them. S sounds like a strat. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. So what, uh, what did you want? Tell me, um, tell, tell me what you wanted, see if I can I, understand. I wanted kind of that high-end thing, that kind of crispness and clarity, but without being ice picky, I guess. That was the main thing I was trying to get across. But just like a depth, I guess, that whole kind of finger and thumb thing, that was something they were keen to try and pick up on. Um, which is why they call the ID Chris Bucks, ID being increased dynamics. And their thinking is the only, um, again, Paul at Radio Shop is going to be looking daggers at me now because the amount of times he's explained this to me and it still goes over my head, they're only partially wax potted. And their thinking there is that if you kind of cover something in wax, inevitably it's going to have an effect on its kind I of I don't tone. like wax potting in pickups, mm. full stop. Exactly. So just to clarify, um, there are different levels of wax potting you can do on a pickup. So a pickup isn't either potted or not. There's a Shades of grey, not least the type of stuff you use to mm. do the potting. Mm. So my uh, pickups are allowed to be in a warm room with a candle. <laughs> <laughs> that's as close as that's it comes. It. That's it. And sometimes it's just the coil. That's if you think about a humbucker for a second. It's, sometimes it's the individual coils mm. that are potted. Sometimes the whole pickups potted. So it's not potted or not potted. There, are, it's a whole area of greyness in between. Mm. Completely unpotted yeah, oh, and completely potted. Absolutely, and that was kind of something they were very keen to try and touch upon. Is that kind of partially potted thing, which you know, like I said, the kind of fingers and and pick thing. They mm -hmm. wanted to try and bring that to the fore, I guess, and make yep. the kind of the tonal variations or kind of variances between that a little bit more prominent. Um, what so magnets yeah. are they? Um, Al Nico, something or other. <laughs> I love those ones. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're better than the three or the fives. Um, okay, so they're one yeah, of the Al Nicos. You um, can look the specs up. I want to I yeah. do, do an experiment, Chris. Mm. I've got here a John Mayer signature Stratocaster. Yeah. It's in tune when I bought it. Thing is, I love you. That's the, that's the gig. That's the gag I make at every single gig. Never ceases to be funny, does it? Even if no one laughs. Play that, please. Um, let's do do the John Mayer thing, is it? Sorry, this guitar is going to sound better than that one. No, but I noticed something on the white one when I picked the white one up earlier, yeah. which I was wondering if I was going to hear in that one, which I do. Those pickups, well, that guitar mm. and that guitar are driving that. Those, yeah, yeah driving yeah. everything a bit harder. Just yeah, go back yeah. to your guitar for a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so this is stock, is it? I guess Big Dippers. Um, whatever, they, whatever were, they were, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Quieter, clearer, yeah. and more articulate. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm totally using you for a bit of product research here. Is don't, right? don't worry, crack on. Because I hope the, uh, the, the that pedal show audience will enjoy it too. It might be in tune. 
The forever, yeah, yeah, yeah. the forever keep, turning on. Keeps going. Just keeps going louder. <laughs> Okay, uh, there's one final thing I'd like to hear. <laughs> Seeing as we're talking about John Mayer, <laughs> the most controversial guitar release this century, probably. Sounds closer to the John Mayer one. It's, or feel wise to me, it sounds more like the, 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 the other uh, yeah. John Mayer signature, the old John Mayer signature. Um, yeah, somewhere somewhere in there. Sounds very nice though. It's, yeah. it's Still, funny, it looks a bit like a strat, doesn't it? Uh, it's <laughs> funny you should say that, yeah. yeah. There you go. Right, co sorry, massive strat pickup tangent there, but. <laughs> uh, it's I, funny. Hope, I hope nobody minds too much. It's funny as well, this guitar was the one. I bought this guitar pretty much just to develop the pickups because they, the guys at Radio Shop said, right, have you got any strats which you want to kind of take apart basically and we can kind of do a bit of, you know, prototyping on. And I didn't, I'm a bit of a Luddite to be honest. If it works, I don't want to touch it because it might yeah, not yeah, work yeah, again yeah. kind of thing and I'm hopeless with that. So I didn't have any pickups or any guitars rather that I wanted to kind of be cannibalizing. So I bought this, not really knowing what it was. It was advertised as a kind of US strat and it says made in the USA on the headstock. So I guess it is in that respect, but it's the Highway 1, which I've done a bit of research since, and all the kind of bump I could find about those guitars is kind of print media because it was slightly predating the internet, I guess. So there's not a load about them, but so the story goes, you probably know infinitely more about this than I do. Um, US parts assembled in Mexico and then sent out. So they're kind of debatably, you know, kind of US or Mexican or whatever. Um, but yeah, I kind of since fell in love with it, really, it's become my main strap. The so. key thing about the Highway 1 series mm. was they had a matte nitrocellulose. Finish. Mm. Now, it wasn't, really? it wasn't full on nitro like they do it properly in a custom shop and all the rest of it, but nevertheless, because I said to Chris, he took it out of the case, I looked at the headstock and went, that's not a US standard because the body looks completely wrong. Because the body would be, if it was a, an American standard, the body would be super shiny, it would be like, mm. you would know, see your face in it. And so I said, did you, did you, was that guitar shiny when you bought it? And he said, no, it wasn't. I said, oh, okay, so it was probably duller then. So it's yeah. got, because they, one yeah, of the, yeah. one of the yeah, things that Fender good. did was they <clears throat> didn't finish it off, like, comp and I guess that was a cost thing to try and keep the cost of pr mm. production down. Oh, they were considerably cheaper, I think, weren't they, than kind of like, I think it's American Special maybe, was or maybe is the kind of equivalent yeah. now. But, but yeah. But also think... it's not, it's not, because they did a Road One series as well, didn't they, were, mm. which were like cheap relics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, I, that's, because I've played, Quite a lot of those guitars, and mm. a lot of them are very heavy, and that is lovely. Yeah, I like that. One. It is nice weight on it. Is isn't it nitro? It? Uh, yeah, it's not full on like nitro base coat and all the rest of it, which I don't even think they do in the custom shop anymore. But it's not full on like an American vintage, so they okay. don't finish it as perfectly as that right. because it's never destined to be finished as perfectly. But the good news is, it looks great. <laughs> it wears nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it looks cool, that's half the battle. Isn't Sorry, it? I'm, I'm um, my, all my strap prejudices yeah, are coming yeah. out. I've got a blue one, um, identical to this one, which is the Highway 1, um, and the paint job on that is horrific. It's like looking at the surface of the moon. It's yeah. just really it's terrible. Um, My and, sunburst telly is the same. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same. Weird, isn't it? And you better just tell us what happened to the second tone pot. Oh, it was very much a tone-conscious choice of removing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it makes stuff easier. No, I dropped my MacBook on it in a hotel room in Spain. <laughs> um, and obviously couldn't do it there and then. So just kind of, as long as it was on 10, I wasn't particularly bothered at that point, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but um, just found over the past couple of months that I haven't actually, I've never missed it. And mm. to be honest, the biggest kind of tonal stuff I do on a Strat is back the volume off. Yeah. That's why I hate the idea of those travel bleeds, because yeah. I like the darkness you get yeah, yeah. Um, when you roll back the uh, volume thing. I use the volume knob a hell of a lot. Um, 
so yeah, just kind of realised oh, I haven't really needed it. And if anything, it kind of makes the volume swell thing a little bit easier without my sausage fingers knocking things <laughs> fly in. So, um, but yeah, you know, please carry on with the speculation that I see in the YouTube comments. Daniel, Stan Hurt. Can I ask some pedal questions? Yeah, I think we should get back to the pedal, shouldn't we? You have three delay pedals on your board. Yes, I do. Yeah. Once again. So, once. <laughs> So I can I, I, um, oh, sorry, I'm trying to count which I I could see two and I forgot about the Aquapus. Aquapus. So, how do you use your delay pedals? Do you use them individually? Do you stack them? Uh, no. Um, so the way I generally go about things, um, the Echo Rec is a very obviously a kind of very specific sound, I guess. Okay. Um, and that I love the Echo Rec. I think again, I was one of the first lunatics that bought the Echo Rec on the day it came out because oh, I, I wanted a pedal that would do that kind of thing for ages. Mm -hmm. So. For me, long legs, um, there's a very specific... And sexy shoes! Thank you, thank you. Um, it's a very specific part of um, uh, a Buck and Hammers track, a couple actually, which have kind of been born out of that pedal, one of which track called Slow Train, and the midsection of that is a kind of... I'm very quiet today, aren't I? Am I on? Oh, there you go. go. Middle one? There you go. <laughs> That, okay. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, the Empress um, is a bit of a strange one. I've got the, uh, we were talking about this earlier, I've recently got the Groose Echo Sex, okay. which is obviously that kind of Echo Rec thing as well, which I'm going to get around okay, to using. The one or two? Uh, the three. The three. Mm, the is new the one. one. You've got? No, I've got the 270E, so the multi head one. Okay. Mm, which has developed the problem. It's got to go back, Daniel. No. Yeah. Oh, tears. <laughs> okay. Um, the Empress, I kind of bought that specifically to do the preset thing because I kind of wanted to do away with the rest of I went through a phase where I was trying to kind of pair things back yep that didn't last long okay um, good man and um, so I bought the, the Emperor I was thinking right kind of slap back mm -hmm. bit of a medium delay and then do the kind of longer whatever you know um, and for the longest time that was set up as presets and I just kind of found I wasn't using it I was either using the Acorec or I'm just standing on the Aquapus because right. I've loved the Aquapus since forever mm -hmm. um, so the Tape delay, at the minute, I couldn't really tell you what that's going to sound like when I turn it on because it doesn't get a massive amount of use. Uh, but we'll find out now. So yeah, that's a that's bit... That's what that does. That's a bit mental. I wouldn't, I'd, <laughs> I'd find some usable sounds in that. It's a great Don't Be Wrong, it's an incredible panel. No, they, they, but they it's are fantastic. Just, um, I've not got around to kind of really dialing in anything. You All know. right, so the Aquapus then. Yeah. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, so the peddly knows how to use. Um, wow. Maybe a little bit more. Um, but yeah, just kind of, you know, under solos, that kind of. Just a kind of nice little crutch and a solo sometimes, you know, to kind of make me feel like I'm not alone. Um, so, um, that does that. What are we missing? Um, the, <laughs> the order of the pedals is a bit of a weird one as well. The blues breaker being the first in the thing, because right. that is my solo boost, at least sometimes. Oh, nice. And it's before the other pedals, which makes zero sense. Um, but... Now, see, I like that because you're, mm. you're increasing. Um, if you have your pedals set with quite a lot of headroom, so you, yeah. your, your pedals after that aren't dying, so there's still enough room for the blues breaker to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason that was is when I got the blues breaker, I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest, with pedals. It was kind of no order or no kind of. Um, you know, thought process going into mm. where they were. I had a reverb pedal for ages that I was convinced was absolutely terrible just because of where it was. It was kind of, you know, um, before all my overdrive pedals. Okay. So I'd flick That'd it on it. and it would sound, yeah, it would sound absolutely terrible. Um, but yeah, kind of that for the longest time was first in the chain. So that's how I've always used it. So when it actually came to putting this together, by which point I was a little bit more, 
well informed as to what I should be doing. I went to put it after, and I just thought, why am I going against what I've always done yeah. there? Just because common common Absolutely. thought says that should go last if you yeah, use yeah, it as a yeah. solo boot. And like you said, all the overdrive pedals are set relatively kind of to stun. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's headroom in there. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you still get a little bit of a kind of volume boost, but it's mainly just a kind of nice gamey kind of thing. Yeah. And especially with Buck and Evans, you know, we're lucky enough to have our own sound guy most of the time who kind of knows when things happening. The katana is there for when we don't. And I just like to remind him that I am taking a solo. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'm trying to take his head off for a couple of seconds. But yeah, for the most part, the Bruce Breaker goes on with maybe the King of Tone or the Clone or whatever, you know. Let's so hear that. Can we hear that? With the Cali 76 as well. I'm so lazy. I just play better if the Cali 76 is pretty much always on, <laughs> which is you feel bad for doing that because, again, it's kind of compressors sound great on clean sounds. But then the further down that road I went with that, it's just kind of like, ah, just leave it alone. <laughs> Sounds better. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> so we've got the breaker going into the Cali into the KOT. Yeah. Yeah. Try that. That's the um, kind of thing that um, you think it sounds really subtle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a gig volume through the PA, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All the difference and the, and the way it feels as well. Yeah, as much it's, as it's a feel thing. It's yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. a feel thing. Like like we were saying about the overdrives earlier, it's not. Uh, they don't sound markedly different, and the kind of the thing you get chucked at you is kind of oh well, the punters can't tell. It's like the punters don't care. All the punters care about is if I'm playing well. And irrespective of whether I'm playing well because I had Weetabix that morning or because the Amp 11 sounds particularly good that night, it's kind of by the by. As long as you sound good, yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. the reason you sound good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. if you've got a couple of different shades available, you know, kind of, yeah, that's what that's what inspires me, I guess. Overdrive pedals, for some people it's delays, it's trams or whatever. For mm, me, yeah. it's, it's overdrive pedals and they're the ones which kind of kick me into that kind of sixth gear, you know. Um, okay. I, love, I love it, and it's, uh, you have to give me the number of your Weetabix dealers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So how is okay? How are you using the Super Ego? That is a bit of a weird one. Um, I bought. It the, is a weird. It one. is a weird one. Yeah, um, goes with all the overdrive files very nicely, doesn't it? Um, no, the reason I bought the Super Ego, um, a mate of mine, a uh, great guitar player back home, um, got me on the Freeze. Yeah, his name. What's his name? A guy called Nick Kelly, a lovely guy, great guitar player, plays in a band called X Y N O, which is all kind of, kind of. EDM stuff, I guess, um, and he's the guitar player in that band, which kind of is EDM? cool. It's, well, it's that kind of other type of music that people listen to that doesn't involve um, kind of a a power chords. Um, I don't know, like dance music. Oh, I see that kind of thing. Electronic, you know? electronic dance music. Electronic yeah, yeah. Dance music. He's oh, probably gonna, EDM. Go. He's probably yeah, gonna yeah. kill me for calling it EDM, which is probably not EDM. Um, but he got me onto uh, the Electronics Freeze, which I just love, and he uses it incredibly well. Yeah, and I wanted that, but with an effects loop. To be able, he uses kind of like wire pedals with it and stuff to control right. the sweep of the, you know, kind of or control of the, the EQ sustain. of the yeah, yeah. freeze, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, the downside of that is that it's just in your chain, so it controls everything else as well. Mm -hmm. So I got the super ego thinking, right, I'm going to get a little wire pedal, I'm going to get a little mini volume pedal to be able to control those independently. I just haven't got around to it yet, so it's pretty much doing the job of the freeze, uh, the freeze mm -hmm. you know. But will at some point do a, you know, kind of more. Um, yeah, whatever. So let's try and. I might have to move. My legs aren't quite that long. <laughs> I could help. Um, um, so press the hot, the super ego down like a second after I've played a chord. So. Which, to be honest, that gets... That's what they should play in curry houses. <laughs> <laughs> instead of the... 
instead of the other drony thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that's where I'm going next. Um, yeah, that was... <laughs> Lost it. Sorry. <laughs> that was what I wanted that to do. That, funny. <laughs> um, that was that kind of just droney thing. And to be honest, even if it's just at home, me kind of noodling around, I find that nice to kind of play over. Yeah. Because um, it gives you some. It's nice to kind of switch between major and minor stuff. You know, if you just kind of set a, you know, kind of like a, a chord going underneath that, just kind of noodle over it. And it does get a bit of use live, not as much as it probably should. I'm mm. kind of learning to get better at that. Especially once I've got the wild pedal and the volume thing in there as well. Um, but it's just, you know, kind of cool to do that. And I've done that a couple of videos and get nothing but complaints. People telling me sounds like my amp is broken. So I don't do it too much in YouTube videos. People are anymore. so grateful, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, really <laughs> grateful when you make nice music for them. Okay, um, the Unprofessional Mark II. Yeah, from Ramble. From Ramble. Uh, I've I've yet to hear one. Oh, okay. Okay, so what please. It? So it's it's a it's their take on the Mark II uh, tone bender. Oh, a tone bender. Okay. I don't use it as a tone bender though. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got it in the Mark. I think it's Mark IV maybe. Which I don't know what that's quite meant to be. I guess a Mark IV Mark IV tone bender. Right. Maybe I don't know. Um, which I is a lot more. It's one point four, isn't it? 1. Oh, okay. One point five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah. It's it's in between it's the one, one right. and two. It's a lot more forgiving. The the two is very kind of, you know, take your head off, kind of ah, mm, angry yeah, fuzz. Yeah, yeah. But that um, in the current down position um, is a bit fatter, a bit more fuzz facey, I guess, um, and just gets it's my kind of angle. Where is it in the chain? It is first, very first. So that's so before, before the clon. Before the clon. Uh, okay. So good the chain name. is um, fuzz into the tuna, tuna into the uh, centura, fantastic. Into the quartermaster all the way through, out into the super ego, rotary reverb. I can't say that without sounding like Scooby Doo. <laughs> um, into the echo rack, into the tape delay, into the EP booster, and out to the amps. So is the EP booster on all the time as well? Yeah, yeah. Ah. So you've got a you've got yeah. a Centura and an EP booster on all the time. There you go. So you've... there's the secret. If you want to play exactly like Chris and sound exactly like him, all you need <laughs> is, a, is a clon and, a, and an EP booster and running the, all the and time. The, the gammy first finger. Uh, and a gammy first finger. Yeah. yeah. Shut it in a door or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't do that. Okay, let's hear this then. <laughs> Yes, that sounds nice. Pedal of rock. I, th I, saw, I am getting the feeling that anything you plug in is going to sound pretty spectacular. <laughs> we should have a listen to that. Have we got one? No. More than welcome to take that one for a bit. That's, um, that's again, that's like a one specific track in the Buck and Evan set. So, um, if we take that, it means he's got to come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very sounds cool. Sounds good to me. Very, very cool. And so... You say it, you just said sorry that hmm. that is for one specific track. Yeah. So that fuzzy thing is not something you do regularly or a lot. Not of. all that often. Yeah. Um, but it's nice to have the, just to surprise people really if they're not paying attention. So. <laughs> um, Some of this Grammy. Uh, Great at weddings. <laughs> so not massive numbers of wobbly things on your board. What no. Got? A tram a phaser. Um, we've got a tram phaser. We've got the roo roo roo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, tram and phaser really. Let's that listen to them, does a load of stuff though. That's amazing. That's um, Alfonso Amida. Um, just yeah, brilliant. Very very cool. And is that made by Love Pedal? Um, it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But... So that does that very kind of uh, Beatles. Which is nice. Um, chorus, Ryan Adamsy, you know, kind of. Um yeah, 
know, kind of that sort of stuff. And then, to be honest, I don't get a massive amount of use out of the rotary. Um, I've got a, what's the little one, the mini vent. Yeah. Got a mini vent, which just, I have not got around to putting on there. Um, but yeah, kind of. There, should I need it? Nice sound pedal, that. It's cool, isn't it? Very it's nice got sound reverb pedal. in it as well, which is the reverb uh, part of it. Um, <laughs> but I just, I've got enough reverb to take it on a horse anyway, coming from the amp. So, um, horses hate reverb. Um, but yeah. The album. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There's <laughs> there you go. the name. There's um, the name of the album. And then the phaser. Um, I don't know whether you heard me telling yeah. Dan earlier the story. I heard a sandwich was involved. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah. It was a baguette, actually. Was it? Um, in yeah. South Wales. In, in South Wales. <laughs> We got electricity now and everything. Uh, we had internet installed last month. Um, but no, a mate of mine in school, I still feel bad. Um, I had one pedal at the time. I had a Digitech Screaming Blues, yeah. which I bought from Music Live. Um, and that was my one pedal. And I took it in proudly to show everyone. And no one cared in chemistry on a Monday morning or whatever. Um, and my mate Ryan sort of said, I got one now. It's, it's green. I was like, ah, oh, cool. I haven't got a green one. What's it do? He was like, oh, I don't know. It's green though. I was like, I'll have it. What do you want for it? Um, and he just, I think he was like, what have you got on you? And I had a tenor. So I get progressively more Welsh as this is going on, this story. Um, she said, I'll bring it in tomorrow. She brought it in. I gave him a tenor and I bought his lunch room, which I think was a baguette. Um, and I took it home, plugged it in, and it sounds, it, well, at the time it just sounded, made my guitar sound like a plane, which I liked, that sort of whooshing. Um, so I didn't use it. Well, I did use it, but not very well for years. Um, and then only recently discovered they quite rare now. I think, you know, kind of they probably fetch about 150 quid on eBay probably. Um, so I'm up, I think in the rest probably. I'm up um, on the baguette and the tenor <laughs> by, a, by a considerable <laughs> amount. Um, so yeah. How would that, you use that? How would you use that? To be honest, again, it's kind of more of a specific thing. It's a, a Buck and Evans track um, on the new album, Plug Plug, which you can't buy yet, um, but soon. What's it called? It's called Write a Better Day. Um, and it's going to be coming out later this year. We've got the copies, we're just sorting distribution and all that fun stuff. The stuff you want to do when you learn to play a G chord is distribution yeah. and yeah. marketing and all right, that kind of right. stuff. A better day. Right, a better day. There you go. And the band is called Buck and Evans. Buck um, and Evans. And we're solicitors when we're not in a band, apparently, for the sounds of the name anyway. Um, <laughs> Buck and Evans and Sons. Um, but yeah, this is a specific Buck and Evans track um, on the thing, the album, which has a chord progression. It's one of those ones that sounds better in tune as well, you tend to find. Um, only Hendrix could do the out of tune art form. And make it cool. Yeah. Him and Guthrie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, the chord progression. Bit of a kind of Pink Floydy. Foo fight as he kind of yep. maybe thing, and that just sounds quite nice with. Yeah, but I want to hear it with this. Okay. That's a you sound, that uh, is. Lama Drasana. <laughs> okay, look, before we, before we wrap things up, mm. I, because we've talked about it so much. Look at Dan, look at Dan galloping towards the end. He's off. No, I just, stop him. Did we miss anything? Can somebody tell me what the R stands for in PH1R? 
really, really good. <laughs> if anyone knows that. That is, um, I don't know. To be honest, I've, they're rare. I've, and I've, you, you, you hardly ever see them. Right. So, hmm. oh, I want you to have Schwang. Have Schwang. Oh, you got a lead of him? It's all in. It's cool. all ready to rock. Ooh, this is nice. I played a 59 Les Paul the other day. Played Bernie Marsden's. Nice. Oh, wow. oh yeah, because you were doing some stuff with him, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I did yeah, a yeah. teaching thing with him last week at the Beast. Um, Stowe House. Yeah, that's a very nice guitar. Heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's the sort of amazing thing about that is the clarity on the neck pickup. I mm. struggle with Les Pauls. Like I said earlier, the, the slash thing when I was a kid, it was kind of a bridge pickup all the way. Sorry, let's give Bernie a honk. Hey. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, that clarity on that kind of neck pickup. So I'm intrigued to see how this fares, actually. Um, cool. No pressure, Dan. No. Yeah, yeah. What am I doing with this one? Well, Whatever you I, like. Have schwang. I want to, yeah, have a bit of schwang. Um, I want to hear some, uh, some slash. Um, oh, well, wow, okay. <laughs> Slash. Oh man, that, <laughs> that was, was amazing. Terrible impression. <laughs> well, look, thank you so much no. for taking the time. I, 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 I've honestly most of the time I'm sat there, I can hardly muster words. <laughs> um, I've been I've watched you for so long doing your videos and stuff, Likewise. but actually to 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 hear you do your thing, it's like, honestly, it's like a joy moment for yeah. me. I'm I'm so oh. moved by your playing. It's it is. Astonishing! Thank you very, very much. It, um, it really affects me. No, genuinely, like like I said, I've got the first T-shirt, and that wasn't bought in sort of anticipation of one day coming on you. That's just as a total fanboy. So, thank you so much for everything you do. And just <laughs> oh, honestly, you know, I'm sure I speak for a hell of a lot of people watching this. In that I've learned so much from you guys. Just, I mean, it was the you know kind of every episode is informative in some respect, and I watch every one, even if I have. Not so much interest in maybe noise gates or whatever, you know. I happily watch it just for the kind of you know learning something. But it was the Graham Coxon episode where it was kind of like this is just gone on to another level now. This is not just geekery. This is like music documentary kind of like interview stuff. It's on another level. It's like uh, Parkinson of thank you. pedals. Parkinson <laughs> of pedals. <laughs> there we go. That's a teacher. You have to attack me with an emu now. Then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> And thanks everyone for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon uh, for supporting us. Thank you guys. Really appreciate that. Um, also, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK is uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. Uh, in the US of A, would be Riff City Guitar of New Hope, Minnesota, among others. And in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, Pedal Empire. Fantastic. And also, if you want to head over to uh, uh, as Chris did, uh, to buy a t shirt. Our first, uh, first ever, ever t shirt sale. Uh, t it was a big day that, Chris. Someone we went, oh my god, someone's actually bought one. This guy <laughs> we, <push> buck in Wales. <laughs> we were, yeah, you we were over at our house. Yeah. And, we had, and, and we had some wine, and then we were watching the camera. It's like, this is crazy. Well, I remember you like, put a video up thanking people for buying t shirts, and it was you kind of, you reading it out, kind of going, Chris Buck of Buck and Evans, and you sort of sagely sat there drinking like a glass of wine going, Fucking Evans. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, don't make it sound less cool than it already did. But, uh, thank you. I can make anything sound less cool. <laughs> um, uh, yes, yeah, so thank you for that. Uh, thanks again, guys, and we're just going to let Chris play us out because uh, why wouldn't you? <laughs> Should grab the Yamaha. Can we, yeah, can we hear your Yamaha? Mm, yeah, yeah. Seeing as you brought that as well. I was at the launch for this guitar. Revstar? At Abbey, at Abbey Road. Oh, wow. oh cool. Yeah. For my first time and only time thus far. To be are they actually road. P90s? They are, yes. Yeah, not home cancelling or anything? No, Straight no, no. P90s. They're noisy. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, genuinely, you know, kind of 
any affiliation aside, very impressed by these guitars. Um, it's a very nice, very nice guitar. So, as badly demonstrated now.